Hello again. In this lecture, we are going to finish up this section on atrial tachyarrhythmias with a discussion here on wandering atrial pacemakers and multifocal atrial tachycardia. In fact, these are two faces of the same problem, except one is faster than the other. By definition, a wandering atrial pacemaker would be less than 100 beats per minute, while multifocal atrial tachycardia would be greater than 100 beats per minute. Remember that the normal sinus rhythm comes from the sinus node, and you should have electrical signals originating from the sinus node and spreading rapidly across the atria. Well, of course, this brings the atrial vector down into the patient's left, and you should see positive P waves in lead 1 and also lead a VF. You know that atrial premature beats arise from somewhere else in the atrium, and because the electrical signal is going in a different direction, the P wave will look differently. Well, imagine if you have more than one spot that's causing APCs. Imagine if you had, let's say, two. Well, if you count the sinus node as being a third site, you should see three different P waves. And that's what we look for in diagnosing either multifocal atrial tachycardia or wandering atrial pacemaker is a minimum of three different P wave morphologies. Imagine that you're looking at a rhythm strip like this. These look like normal sinus beats here with P waves and QRS complexes. And this is clearly an early beat. It's a premature atrial contraction. And then this seems to be a compensatory pause, another sinus beat. And then here's another PAC, but the P wave looks different. This one is a biphasic P wave, means it goes up and then down. It goes in two different directions. That's what biphasic means. But this P wave only goes down and not up. And so what you have here is sinus rhythm with multifocal PACs. Now that's different from multifocal atrial tachycardia. These are multifocal PACs, but you can see that the predominant rhythm is a sinus rhythm. So when you see sinus rhythm with multiple atrial premature beats that have P waves that look different from each other, you can call it multifocal PACs. Okay, now what does MAT look like? MAT would look like this. You have some P's that are going up, you have some P's that are going down, you have some P's that look tall, and some P's that are biphasic, and so on and so forth. And there's not one single P wave morphology that predominates, so you really don't have sinus rhythm with multifocal APCs. What you have is multifocal atrial tachycardia, or MAT. This is commonly seen in people with lung disease, like bad COPD. They'll often come with arrhythmias like MAT. Well, here I have drawn it with a rate of somewhere around 120. But imagine seeing the same kind of arrhythmia with a rate less than 100. Then you wouldn't call it multifocal atrial tachycardia, because after all, tachycardia means greater than 100. You would call it wandering atrial pacemaker. And what does that mean? It just simply means that the P wave is not coming from the same spot all the time. It's not originating from the sinus node. It's kind of moving around. Now we're not talking about P waves that just vary slightly, maybe just get a little bit flat sometimes because the sinus nodal complex is actually a large area. But even during sinus arrhythmia, you can see minor changes in the P wave morphology as the electrical signal emerges from different spots from the sinus nodal complex. But here you clearly see there are some P waves that are completely upside down. Some are biphasic, some are taller than others. And so this is an example of what multifocal atrial tachycardia looks like. Let's look at a real tracing here. This is actually an arrhythmia that does not occur too often. There is a little bit of noise here, some high frequency artifact that unfortunately you have to ignore. But if you just look at AVL, you can see that some of the P waves are inverted. This one is flat and this one is clearly upright. You can see in other leads this is very tall. And then this one is actually a lot flatter. Here you have a biphasic P wave. This one is inverted and this one is upright. So even in lead 3, you have three different P wave morphologies. Unfortunately, the rhythm strip is not as clear because of the artifact, but you have a sense that there is not one fixed P to P interval that is occurring on a regular basis that would suggest that there's an underlying sinus beat. Maybe this longest interval here, you see a tall P wave, and that looks the same as this longer interval with a tall P wave, and maybe here. So maybe there's a little bit of a sinus rhythm that's trying to break through. But the majority of the P waves are coming from all different spots in the atrium. So this would be an example of MAT. Here's another example that I found. And again, if you glance across, you see that the rate here is just a little over 100. 
When you look at the P wave, some of them are flat, some of them are biphasic, some of them are flatter, some of them are taller. This one is very tall, this one is very early, and seems to have two phases to it. So it's almost like the electrical signal is originating from different parts of the atrium at the same time, like they're competing with each other. MAT is a disturbance in calcium handling within the cells. And often these patients respond best to calcium channel blockers, like verapamil. But as I said, this is a kind of a rare arrhythmia. We don't see it too often. But you should be able to recognize it based on the variable P wave morphology. Remember, you need to see at least three different P wave morphologies to say that either wandering atrial pacemaker or multifocal atrial tachycardia is present. So that's it for today. See you in the next lesson on atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation. Stay tuned.